So I thought now that we're bombing Syria again, uh, because, you know, wars in the Middle East have to be an ongoing thing apparently, we should do a video where we talk about what is and isn't a nerve agent, and how the media doesn't know what nerve agents actually are, as we've seen with this Syria thing, and this um, sort of Russian spy poisoning thing where they kept saying, oh, it's a nerve agent, but we need to change our story every five minutes because we can't decide on facts. So. Let's start off the, the basics, although I've covered this before, what are nerve agents? Normally organophosphate chemicals, they interrupt the body's ability to basically communicate with its own nervous system, leading to death through basically breathing problems and heart attacks, things like that. So, the first nerve agent was discovered in Nazi Germany called Tabern. It was made when a pesticide was made that became too deadly for commercial use. It was then made in more efficient versions called Sarin and Soman, and then the V-series came later you know, finishing off with VX, again made from pesticides, um, and then there's all these Russian ones which may or may not exist called the Novichok series, because again, you can't tell if the media is doing all this scaremongering. So, the thing to note about nerve agents is that they are incredibly deadly. Even Tabin, the weakest one, is a weapon of mass destruction. If a nerve agent is sprayed on a city, it will kill lots and lots and lots of people. What makes nerve agents so deadly is they can kill through skin contact alone, they don't have to be inhaled. If you inhale a nerve agent, though, it is far deadlier than if you get it on your skin, but that's only a question of quantities, not sort of the strength of the nerve agent. So, for example, with Tabun, if you got one whiff of it with your nose, you'd be dead. If a couple of droplets touched your skin, you'd be dead. It only needs a couple of grams to touch your skin with Tabun to kill you. As you go into the more and more dangerous nerve agents, that amount goes further and further down. Until you get to things like VX, where one gram of VX can kill between about 500 and 1,000 people through skin contact alone. It is really deadly stuff. Now, obviously, if you inhale it, it will kill you faster than if you got it on your skin. Because of how the absorption process works and everything like that. But the point is that nerve agents are really deadly. They are a weapon of mass destruction. Think of them as a chemical agent version of a nuke in um, sort of all seriousness. You know, if you had a similar quantity of a nerve agent drop to um, the size of a nuclear bomb, obviously, you'd kill the same amount of people as long as it, they came into contact with the gas or the vapour. Or the liquid, depending on how it's distributed. So when you have these supposedly nerve agents being used which aren't all that deadly, this is where big questions get raised, especially if the media says it's a nerve agent. It's a bit like if you've seen all those pictures where the media says the person holding an AK-47 or the person holding an AR-15 and it's neither of those rifles, it's a bit like that. So, with nerve agents, let's say there's been a nerve agent attack somewhere, let's just use Syria as an example because I saw examples of this. There were lots of people in surgical masks handling bodies or injured people and people wearing gas masks but no gloves and that handling bodies. If people have come into contact with nerve agents, a surgical mask is going to do nothing to protect you from inhaling it. Similarly, if you're not wearing gloves, you've got your gas mask on, but you've not got any suit on, you've not got gloves on. If you're handling people who have been killed by a nerve agent, uh, you are going to be coming into contact with that nerve agent. You will die or become very ill. Now, there has been incidents in the past, like with that Japanese doomsday cult, where they tried to make nerve agents and didn't make it right, so basically what that meant was the people who came into contact with that became very ill, but there were far fewer deaths than there should have been because it wasn't a proper nerve agent. It was, you know, somebody in a bathtub essentially trying to make a nerve agent with very limited chemical equipment. So, you can get failed attempts at making nerve agents, but they aren't proper nerve agents. This is the thing we have to stress, that if you've got a list of chemical weapons that are in the nerve agent series, and one of these chemical weapons isn't one of those, then it's not really a nerve agent, is it? Because, for example, if you got um, a strong pesticide or insecticide, sprayed that at people, you'd kill some people and you'd make others very ill. The same way a nerve agent works, it's just far less deadly. So, what we need to stress, really, is that you do not believe the media anymore when they talk about chemical weapons like they've got an authority on it. I certainly don't have an authority on it, I just find the subject interesting. But when you can read about this stuff, and it's the most basic level stuff on some of these things, and the media constantly gets it wrong, they don't have an authority to talk about it. So, what you need to know, and I've, as I said before lots of time in videos, nerve agents are really deadly. 
if there's somebody been exposed to chemical weapons and it's nowhere near as deadly, it's for example, people don't die or people can handle it without the right protective gear on all this, it's not a nerve agent. That's like saying a conventional bomb is a nuke because it was a fiery explosion. So, hopefully my point's been got across, but yeah, as I said, I don't watch the news anymore just because there's so much crap in it. And then whenever I do see something on the news where they do talk about chemical agents, they always don't know the first thing they're talking about. So, uh, thanks for watching. Stay safe.